welcome to the Unlearn Show. We have Matt Burns. Matt, welcome. Thank you so much for participating and being here. We want to talk about breaking bad habits with a purpose. Welcome. I have a lot of bad habits, so I'm the right spot. <laughs> so, Matt. <laughs> So, and uh, leading up to this, you know, this is the Unlearned Show, right? We're all kind of here trying to figure out what things in life have really just kind of either put blocks up or things we, we've learned that we've realized later in life that just aren't serving us. What's something that you have been unlearning that has brought you kind of where you're at today? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, and luckily, the show title gave me an indication what you'd ask me. So I was, felt, felt very prepared for that. Um, <laughs> I, for those who don't know, I'm pretty prolific on LinkedIn in terms of the fact that I spend way too much time on the platform. Uh, and I chose that platform to share the fact that I made a transition about a year ago from a cor corporate role where I was an executive into a social entrepreneurial role where I'm essentially on my own more often than not. And uh, I've had to go through a pretty big transition. Uh, we were talking off camera about some of the things I had to learn going from being an executive to now being an entrepreneur. Uh, and I expected there would be a lot of personal growth in terms of having to learn how to be an entrepreneur and, and tips and tricks that were more tactical and business in nature. But one thing I really underestimated was the amount of personal transformation I'd have to go through to have success in that realm. Um, and that's where the real unlearnings happen for me. That's good. So is there something specifically that from a personal growth standpoint that's really stood out for you? Yeah, I would say vulnerability. Um, when you are a corporate executive, you are taught to not show, at least I was taught, not to show any real emotion. Um, that emotion is seen as weakness. And I worked for a lot of large organizations where, um, let's be honest, it's very competitive um, and it's very much a, a winner or loser type of environment. And you learn to be very guarded, um, either in terms of with your coworkers or with employees or with you know, the external public. You're taught and trained how to kind of have that level playing field and when you show emotion it's seen as an overreaction or as vulnerability and that's not a positive thing in a lot of big organizations even today um, as an entrepreneur you can't do that because you don't have a, a big brand to rely on you are the brand and people to connect with you have to feel that they are with you on this journey or they buy into what you have to say and what you believe and that requires vulnerability um, I tried early on to kind of project that professional image for myself and I had limited success in doing so because it just didn't have the same connection it did in a corporate setting. So I would say that was the biggest learning so far for me. Was there like one instance where that clicked for you? Like did something happen where you're like, ah, dang, I'm not doing this right? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I've, I've tried to be very deliberate about listening and observing what happens. So I, I try different things and I react to them. And I would say that about three months into the journey, I looked around and saw who was reaching out to me and who was connecting with me. Uh, and it wasn't the people that I wanted to connect with. So what I was projecting was an image or a, or a persona that was attracting the wrong kind of people. And they weren't bad people, they just weren't the people that were gonna ultimately benefit the most from my products and services. So that was a big inflection point for me was you attract what you put out there in the world and I just simply wasn't attracting the right people. So kind of a follow up to that, like, what, what's driving you in what you're doing today? Like, why, what's the bigger reason? Like, what are you trying to attract to you and for what like purpose, I guess. Yeah, I think the final word is the, what I'm trying to achieve, which is purpose. So I, I spent 20 years in the corporate world, 15 of those in HR, and by just nature of the roles that I was in, I unfortunately architected a lot of activities that led to job loss in the hundreds, if not thousands of people. Um, and it became to a point in my career where I asked myself that I wanna keep doing that, uh, because the reward, by the way, for doing it well is you have to keep doing it. And I really wanted to find something in my life that had more purpose, that was going to contribute value to broader society, and didn't just help organizations achieve the next quarterly earnings report. Um, so as I've sought um, partners and collaborators and customers going forward, I want to work with people and collaborate with people that view business beyond just profit, but also with purpose. So how, 
how did you get into the role that you're that you were in, you know, that very corporate role, like what drove you down that avenue to make you choose to follow that, you know, and kind of not necessarily focus on a purpose, but focus more on that career element and that corporate element. Cause I feel like that's very common with professionals all over the world is they're focused on, you know, what that professional, what the biggest paycheck can bring or the biggest amount of people, people that they can lead, you know? I'd love to learn more about your focus there. Sure, my story, you're right, isn't unique. So there are a lot of people even today that feel the same way that I do, but just simply haven't made the move in the transition yet. And I get emails every single week from people saying, Matt, I'd love to do what you did, but I'm scared and I can't, because I have bills to pay or I have family that relies on me and I can't take the risk of going out on my own. I need the security of a paycheck every two weeks. And I, I understand that. It took me 37 years to get to this point. So I'm in no position to judge other people for, for being where they are. Um, I grew up in a time where uh, when, you were, when I came out of high school and was in university, working for big companies was still seen as really positive. Um, you wanted to work for big brands. You wanted the brand recognition of global organizations. Um, the, the title and, and the places that you worked were still the things that your parents would talk about with their friends at dinner parties. Um, and I grew up in an environment where baby boomers um, were my bosses when I first started. So I grew up in that environment in the kind of the late 90s, early 2000s, where that was still very much um, kind of a prevalent way of management. Uh, and I had a lot of success. I came from a household where my father was a police officer. His father was in the military. Uh, so I grew up in an or structure and order and discipline, and that fits really well in a corporate environment. So I had a lot of success, um, you know, whether it was uh, family success and kind of pushed me into that direction. But once I got into the environment, I realized I was very comfortable in the environment and therefore progressed really quickly. So even with family um, pushing me, I also achieved personal success. And I, that's, that's addictive. I mean, when you get lots of positive feedback and you get promotions and you get opportunities, you feel good about yourself and you want to keep that going. Uh, but ultimately, when you look back, and as, as at least in my case, as I matured and started to value things more than just the material things in life, I realized that I wasn't really achieving in the things that mattered. So how do, how do you fight against, um, like I'm assuming like, launching into an entrepreneurial journey isn't as structured. So like, what do you do to combat that to, to actually relearn how to exist in that environment as opposed to such a structured corporate environment? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I surround myself with people that I know and trust that have been either through that journey themselves or can add something to the conversation. And that's where the vulnerability piece comes in. Um, I've had to ask for help a lot in this process, um, both from a personal perspective and also from a professional perspective. And having the willingness to reach out to people has made a big difference in, in my own journey and frankly, has shortened the, the learning path. If I had just stayed stubborn about trying to figure things out on my own, I don't think I would be as far along in that trajectory. Um, so for me, it's, it's having that network of people that you know and trust um, and that are, that are willing to give of themselves selflessly. Um, and I think that is something that I've taken with me as I talk to other people who are going through similar transitions, I try and replicate the same example for them. Because so I remember it wasn't too long ago that I was going through that. And I still, I'm still going through that. So I have my own company and I am very new in this realm, especially with the consulting side of my company. So every day it is something how do you how do you manage stress and all of that good stuff that comes along with being so because everything's unstable right you never know when your next client's coming you never know just anything like anything crops up taxes on and on and on yeah. websites get hacked uh, like contracts get pulled. Yeah. Welcome to the world of being an entrepreneur where it's a fun day every single day of the week. Uh, well, I try and do two things. So I, I focus a lot on self-care and that was something I learned coming out of the corporate world. I didn't do a good job of self-care. So I would work 60, 70 hours a week and I knew that paycheck was coming. So as long as I was able to kind of show up, it was fine. 
uh, but I really wasn't concerned about optimizing my performance. But as an entrepreneur, you will succeed or not succeed on the strength of your own individual contribution when you're just starting out. So I'm very mindful about things like diet and exercise and I meditate and I do yoga, things that I, I was, I always kind of dabbled in them before, but now I'm very deliberate about them and I carve out space in my schedule to make those things happen because without them, I couldn't manage the stress. And there, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put on a fake facade. There are some tough days where I just go, what did I do? Like, why did I throw away a job that paid me so much money and gave me so many opportunities for this? Like, I don't need this headache. I can go back to the corporate world tomorrow and walk into an executive job and, and have that success. But ultimately, the answer is, is that it's not what I want for myself and it's, I can, I'm capable of more. And it is a tough transition, but ultimately, I think as we project kind of the future of work that is the future the, the idea of the big multinational corporation is coming to an end and I was in a position where in addition to wanting to have purpose and wanting to have meaning in my life I also wanted to be in a position where I could jump as opposed to being pushed so I've deliberately put myself in uncomfortable situations that focus on personal growth knowing that I'll take those experiences with me so I think that's part of it Katie in terms of just creating the conditions around self-care, make that happen. Uh, and the second thing is, is I, I've, I'm really deliberate about my process. So the hardest thing for me when I started was, to your earlier point, not knowing when the next paycheck would come. Um, you know, not having that every that two weeks, that, that, you know, that constant feed, that was tough because like you, you put in a ton of work and it's not equity based. Like you can work your butt off and build relationships and do all the right things and not get rewarded for it. Um, and for me, it was about really focusing in on process and just digging away every single day the things that made sense. And I found that it's a longer term cycle, but ultimately the contracts start to roll in over time. Um, and this is the first one, the second one, the fifth one, the 10th one. And I'm, I'm consistent with that process. And I believe that's going to carry me through by the same token. I'm also humble enough to know that when I'm doing something is not working, I'm willing to change it. So my strategy is very different now than it was when I first jumped. Um, and it's going to continue to evolve because the market continues to shift and evolve and I have to respond to it. You just said that so well, because like you described the, what I call the entrepreneurial existential crisis that comes usually weekly, sometimes daily. And, uh -huh. and then you kind of, yeah. But then you, as soon as you go through it, you're like, I'm, should I just go back to a job? But then you realize that like even your worst days out here, there's such a purpose behind it. Like, I mean, that's, it's getting so, I mean, we're going to have to find a new word that's like not so buzzy, but they're really, I mean, that's what it feels like. It's very, you feel fulfilled. And even though part, parts of you feel miserable, you're fulfilled. So I love that. So thank you. Well, for, for me, I'll give you a new word. How about impact? Because for me, it's about impact. I mean, when I'm, I, I, had, I had impact in the organizations that I worked in because I was in an executive role, but the impact that I had was limited to that organization. And now I can have an impact on a global scale. And that for me is much more important because I think we, we need more people stepping out of the corporate world and, and pulling on the rope because we're not in a great place. Um, and I've always believed I've had the ability to do that. It just was the internal block in my own brain that wouldn't allow me to get to that place. So I'm focusing now on trying to, if you will, realize my potential um, and there's tough days. Like it's, I, I didn't expect there wouldn't be, but I, I got to keep plugging away at this. Oh, last question. What do you do, Matt? I don't, I, I just don't know. And it's just that I want, I would love to know. Yeah. So I do a couple of things right now. I'm doing HR consulting primarily in the areas of technology and analytics and also in some talent areas. So essentially the question I ask most people is, can you get more from your HR department? And if the answer is yes, then I usually come in and try and find out how we do that together. Uh, in a lot of cases, we start with the foundation of technology and we automate all the manual administrative work that doesn't add value, either for the HR professional or for the broader organization. And we reallocate those resources to things that actually make a difference. In some cases, it's we use data and we have data and every HR department that has any type of resourcing has lots of data, but they're not using it. So I help them harness their data and leverage it to create action plans and programs that are gonna ultimately impact the organization and do so in a really cost-effective way. 
Uh, and then in the last case is I work a lot with HR leaders. So CHROs, VPs of HR, and I help them understand where we've come from as a profession and as organizations and where we're going in the future. And oftentimes we'll kind of play that wingman, that sounding board role and help them through the transition themselves because there are a lot of people who, you know, I sat in their seat. I know what their life is like. I know it's not easy being in that role and I can help them get to a place where they can have more success because I forced myself in my last role to, to try a bunch of different experiences that ultimately had some success. So I have a perspective that I think works and I'm trying to cascade that. So really it's, I'm trying to give both in terms of thought leadership and also in consulting the HR departments in the world a bit more juice that they can use to help their organizations, which ultimately impacts employees. So you've mentioned a lot of different arenas of professionalism, right? You've highlighted entrepreneurship, you've highlighted the corporate side. What I really want to dig in a little bit more and find out in your mind is when you left the corporate side, you, you really started to understand vulnerability. But how do you think vulnerability can be used effectively in the corporate setting by executives to create those really awesome cultures and promote those, that sustainability, that, that really nurturing environment where you don't have to let go of a, a bunch of people? Yeah, so I think it's a tough question because I think in some corporate cultures today, vulnerability still isn't a good thing. So I don't want everyone to jump out this call and then immediately start being vulnerable at work because in some cultures, it just wouldn't be acceptable. Um, and I think that's a shame, but I think it's a, it's a function of regional differences in cultures that we need to account for. I think where it can be harnessed effectively is in building really strong bonds with your teams and with your coworkers because ultimately nobody's perfect. There's nobody on this call who's perfect. Maybe Sunny's close, but everyone else isn't. Um, and we're all just trying to do the best that we can with the tools that we have. So when you put over an image of perfection, people don't think that you're real. And when you're not real, people don't trust you. And when they don't trust you, they don't want to work with you or, or work for you. So I think as a vulnerability piece, it's opening yourself up to the fact that you're not perfect and you're still learning. And ultimately, I think that is what also drives success for leadership. It's about being servant to the people that you work with, not about being in front and having to pull them along behind you. So Matt, I have the question for you on a ton of awesome information. And you and I have had multiple conversations around this from a professional standpoint. Is there one moment where professional and personal just overlapped and you were like, you know what? I am not doing what I need to do both for my family and for myself as a professional. That made you ultimately say, I have to do this. And then if that happened, what did you do next? Yeah, it's a good question. It's a longer story. I'll keep it short for the purposes of, of the, the show. But there's a video I put out when I launched the company in October of last year that explains kind of the why behind why I did, I did this. But for me, it was an experience I had in Brazil. I met with a number of students that were in a university entrance prep program. And these kids were gifted. Um, they were smarter than any people I've met in quite some time. But because of circumstances that they were born into, they didn't have the opportunities that you and I have in terms of education and jobs and career. Uh, because in Brazil, the system of education is set up in such a way that if you have money, you send your kids to private school and they go to university and then they get good jobs. If you don't, you don't send your kids to school because oftentimes you're not eating seven nights a week and you need the child to go to work so that you can pay the bills um, and feed your family at the very basic of necessities. And these individuals, when we ask them why, because they're putting themselves through hell in a lot of cases. They were feeling pressure from their parents to go back to work and not go to school. They were feeling pressure from their friends to, to, to kind of get in line and not pursue education. When we asked them why, I was blown away by the humility that they came back with in terms of they were doing it for their families, they were doing it for their communities, they were doing it for their countries. And here I was sitting in an MBA program in Brazil that I paid for in cash. I didn't have any student loans on me. And then I'm going to Buenos Aires the following week for a vacation because I'm so burnt out from my experience that I need a break. And here are these kids taking a bus three hours to and from school every single day to have a chance to go to school. And I realized that my perspective was just completely misaligned. And I realized that I had spent 20 years of my life justifying selfish behavior as a means of enrichment when I should be looking more at what's happening around me. Uh, and I, I, my next step was 
I reached out to a couple of really close friends and said, um, I need to change things up. What do you, how should I start? And I spent the next kind of nine to 12 months and we had chats very early on in this journey, Sonny, where I just kind of figure out what made sense for me. And ultimately I decided that marrying up the skills that I had built in 20 years in the corporate world, which still had value and had currency in the market, but I could do so in a way that also generated a bunch of revenue for me, but I had control over the revenue where I can give it all away. That's what I'm doing now. I'm doing exactly the same thing I did in the corporate world. I'm just doing it independently. And then when I say make the revenue, I'm not, not beholden to shareholders. I'm beholden to the cause and purposes that mean the most to me. Absolutely awesome. Uh, and I, I want to open it up for the co-hosts because we're running up against the, the end part of our time. But if anybody else had any other questions about that, because I feel that there's so much more that we can hear from you about impact, about the fact that you took that leap into what you're doing now. Um, does anybody else have anything else that they wanted to ask Matt before we turn it over to Matt to give him the opportunity to ask us any questions while we close? Awesome. Matt, for the next four to five minutes, the floor is all yours. I know you may or may not have met some of the co-hosts here. This is your opportunity to at least ask a teaser question or at least start a conversation that maybe you haven't had the opportunity to. Uh, I guess this is a question for all of you, which is of all the shows that you've done and you guys, I love watching your program, love the content. What answer from a guest that you've heard has most surprised you and why? Everyone just did this. It's hard to pick one. Uh, I think when someone you don't expect to be transparent. We'll just lay something out for you. Uh, that's to me, that's the ones that I enjoy the most actually. Cool. Yeah. I don't think I can pick one, but it's like those moments when all of a sudden <clears throat> it almost feels like somebody like cracks open and they like lay their story out there and you're like, Oh, wow, I would never have guessed that you went through that. Mm. And then that's where that, it got you to today. Like those journeys that people take to get them to the point that they're at, those are what's really fascinating. And it's, and it's, it's really great when they are willing to share that kind of stuff because I think that that's what actually helps other people is knowing those those deep stories um and we're getting better about actually like getting to those stories with people because we've we've discovered how to actually tap into that a little bit more but yeah those are the good ones great wasn't it uh was it matt ganyan ganyans that i think his really his really surprised me and for multiple reasons because like he went really deep really fast and was able to speak about really heavy things very objectively and I thought that was I don't know it was just really interesting and it wasn't at all what I expected you know because a lot of the time I think it's and especially because we're so limited with time it stays very uh, you know service or just below and so his was just like boom we're all crying and uh, yeah I don't know it was just it was really cool I uh, agreed. I can't pick a specific person. I, I realized that there's so much more to the world than what's in my perception, like what's in my perspective of things. So when I hear somebody's story and I hear about the adversity that they overcome, it takes me a little bit to really understand what that took for them, you know, versus what it takes for me, because what it takes for me is something totally opposite. You know, like I've never had the, the luxuries or the hardship of any of the guests that we've had on the, on the show. So, I mean, mental health is one thing and physical health is another thing and stress is another thing. But when you get that personal level, it's like, how do you experience that? Like, how do you connect a little bit deeper? 
because you really have to take down your barriers, open your heart up and put your perception or your perspective in to a whole different arena, just stepping outside of yourself. It's, it's really remarkable. There isn't just one person that surprised me. They all surprised me and they continue to surprise me. You surprised me today, you know, talking more about the corporate world and the, the executive side of things and, and leaving that and all that. We've never had anybody on the show do that. So that was really awesome. Thank you for opening up about that. You're welcome. So I think the, the biggest thing that everybody has said is that there isn't just one that has really tied us down to, wow, that's awesome. Um, every perspective is different, right, Matt? Uh, and just like what Chantel said, what Lacey said, Katie, um, Jake, I think what impresses us the most is that people are so willing to share with all of us, right? Perfect strangers, if you think about it, right? It's, it's been a year since we've, Watch this show, and there we have developed this chemistry amongst ourselves, and our own stories are unique as they are, to share just anything at any level, and to say, "Here's who I am." You know, you mentioned this at the very beginning. I think you said that I had to show vulnerability, and I wanted to find purpose. And I think for us, every single guest has that kind of unique perspective. And we find something else about ourselves, just like we find out about our guests. And that, to me, that's, that's been kind of the beauty of the show. Cool. Thanks, guys. Well, Matt, thank you so much. We appreciate you being a host. Once again, each and every one of us has the utmost respect and are so glad that you came on. And we actually are excited about the fact that you have taken the leap into entrepreneurship because almost every single one of us has taken that same leap very recently. Um, and if there's anything we can do to help you out, we absolutely want to help you to get to the next level. So thank you for being a guest on the online show. Appreciate it.